Hello and welcome to the video. I have made this video in response to the many, many requests that I have had from people asking me to compare the super fast Imperial Stout to my previous reiterated mash Imperial Stout. Both of these brews, complete with my methods and recipes, are available on this YouTube channel. Before we go on to the actual judging of these beers, complete with tasting notes and opinion, here is some information regarding both beers. These beers are exactly one year apart in age. The regular Imperial Stout was stored in bulk in a carboy before being bottled recently, whereas the Superfast Imperial was only ever stored in bottles, and of course is a very recent brew. In looking at the recipes and methods used in both of these brews, you will note that the regular Imperial had a reiterated mash and has purely grain-based fermentables, whereas the Superfast Imperial was a single mash beer that used dark candy sugar to make up approximately 5.1% of the alcohol in the beer. It is fair to say that these are both quite different recipes, and they're not designed to be the same of course, with the Superfast Imperial Stout having quite a different agenda compared. So whilst that is not a direct comparison, some questions remain. How do they taste compared? Can you really make such a strong beer so quickly and have it taste as good as one that has been brewed and aged traditionally? My personal findings were that the super fast imperial stout, due to the fact that it uses Norwegian fake yeast, changed rapidly into the beer that it is now. It took about five weeks to get to this stage. It's fair to say that the beer was more than enjoyable after a mere two weeks and could certainly rival some commercial Imperial Stouts at that point, but it has certainly blossomed since then into a profoundly different and better beer. The main changes have been how clean and rich the tastes have become, but the texture of the beer has also changed in this time. It was now time to get the judges in for this taste comparison. Here I present the averaged out scores, which I hope you will find interesting, and I certainly found quite surprising. So here are the scores for our Imperial Stout, the regular version. You can see that this beer got a very respectable score of 89 out of 100, doing well in each category. Appearance-wise, this is a typical black stout with a brown head. This brown head does not last for so long in this brew for some reason, but you do get an awful lot of lacing on the glass because of the alcohol involved. This does not spoil the beer in terms of how it smells or tastes, of course. Comments from our judges are as follows. Very smooth. Sweet and strong. Plenty of chocolate and coffee flavours with extra complexity. Some dark fruits. Sweet coffee on the nose. Very nice sweet finish. Slightly thicker than the super fast stout, with more of an alcohol taste, but nothing unpleasant. Now let's move on to the super fast imperial stout. As you can clearly see, this one was very well received. Some actually preferred it, which is very surprising considering. I was surprised how well it turned out myself also, to be quite honest. Comments from our judges are as follows. Coffee and chocolate flavours with sweet malt ending with a nice dry finish. Smooth and very drinkable, despite its known alcohol strength. A serious challenger to a conventionally brewed and fermented stout. Both of these stouts pretty much scored the same in most areas. The super fast imperial stout gained an extra two points for its smell and its appearance. In truth, no one could really say that they totally preferred one over the other. The main question on the table once both beers were tasted, discussed and scored was is there really any point in fermenting an imperial stout with regular yeast when you have to wait a lot longer for a very similar result from fake yeast? Another question that came up was why do so many home brewers stray away from using sugars in their strong beers when the reality is that the end result has no disadvantage? These are points and opinions that we are still arguing about ourselves. Let me know your opinion in the comments section. 
Whatever you do though, try out all methods first before forming a final opinion. This now concludes this video. I do hope that you found it to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If you didn't enjoy it, then please tell me why you didn't enjoy it. And if you did, then the same applies. It's all well and good getting thumbs up and thumbs down on YouTube, but it's also important for content creators to understand what people do and do not like. Thank you. So if you did like this video, then please do like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I have always got a lot of new videos planned for the future, so if you are interested in seeing my new content, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I have covered in this video, or any other video, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with me via YouTube or Facebook. I am a member of pretty much every Grainfather Facebook group and more. Happy Brewing!